I'm going to sit in this chair because i got a bad habit of walking around. I'm afraid I'm going to get tangled up in these wires and go down. <laughs> uh, if you guys would bow with me, I'd like to open up a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we humbly, humbly bow before you tonight, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I sit over in that chair, Lord, with butterflies in my stomach, Lord, because... Lord Jesus, this is a far different kind of atmosphere than I used to hang out in, and I feel so unworthy mm. just to be in your presence. Father God, I have uh, stood behind your holy desk many times to speak on your behalf, but I always feel insufficient, and I always will be insufficient. Lord, I ask you to take over my lips and tongue and to head my mind down the path of what you want me to go, Lord. You know I'm around in 40 different places here, Lord, trying to figure out what you want me to speak on. Lord, I just ask you to take a hold of my lips, heart, mind, my emotion. Allow the message to touch somebody, Lord. Lord, I think I know what you want me to say, but I really don't know how to go about it. And I just ask you to take take hold of that. And just bless this radio station, those out there tonight, Lord, in whom you've already decided to use to keep it going, Lord. You knew before the dawn of time what the night would bring. Lord Jesus, you have us all in your hands. Lord, if you're somebody out there that's almost on the verge of giving, Lord, and they really need to give in order to be obedient to you and to keep this life, I just ask you to nudge them all. In Jesus, morning, if there's somebody out there tonight on the verge of a major mistake, or Lord Jesus, if they're just horribly lost in sin or just feel like they're so alone, I just pray, Lord, that something that I say might grab a hold of them, Lord, that their life might be different. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, uh, I want to talk about religion because I think religion is one of the most overrated things of our time. And the fact that I think religion has become a crutch for a lot of people in which they pick up and lay down just when they have a hard time getting around. And so many times I think that the reason why our religion is exactly that way is because we only want to experience the high places. And we really struggle with accepting the low places in our spiritual walk with God. And I, and I want to give you an example of that. And this is the best way I know to illustrate it. Not <clears throat> so long back my little church, several of us went to a Chris Tomlin concert. Some people might know who he is and some might not. He's a contemporary musician and I'm not much of the dancer and I don't really get much into jumping around and playing arms and hooping and hollering but a lot of people do and he started off the concert with a really up, upbeat songs you know and a disco ball and lights going on over the place and people were praising the Lord you know and jumping around the songs like God's great dance floor and I wasn't doing much of that I was just kind of watching everybody but somewhere along the line about halfway through he turned the disco ball off and all the jumpy lights and turned the music down low and sat down at the piano and played Amazing Grace. Mm. And at that time, I don't know how many people was there, several thousand people. I'm going to say at least 75% of them had tears in their eyes. Mm -hmm. And I think that everybody's figured out heaven's going to be a celebration. And I believe when I get to heaven, I'll do a little jumping and hooping and hollering. Now, I ain't going to do the mashed potato just as soon as I get there. I don't really have a master in this life. However, I, I think before you can prepare to rejoice with God, you have to have an understanding of who you are compared to Him. Mm. And I think that's where religion really struggles. So tonight, I want to read you Psalms 130. It says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice, and let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in His Word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman wait for the morning, 
more than the watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is unfailing love, and with Him there is full redemption. He Himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Last night I was, I was kind of a bachelor again. My wife and kids was gone different ways, and I had stayed home alone. I was sitting there in a quiet house, and I hate a quiet house. I, I thought I liked a quiet house till the kids left, and I, I don't like a quiet house. But I was sitting there praying, Lord, i got to speak on your behalf tomorrow evening at, at, at the radio station, and I, I don't know what to say. But I want to say what you would say. And it occurred to me that there will be three kinds of people listening to this radio right now. There's one kind of person listening to this radio that has never realized how sick their sin is to God. Mm. Their religion has just been the thing they do. And uh, they're never really... They realize that there is sin in their life, but they've never really come to that gut gripping feeling where God just showed them that His sin makes Him more... Their sin makes Him more violent. There's those people that have realized that, but they're lost in the darkness of sin and they have no idea how to get out of it. They want to so bad they can't stand it. And there's other people that's got out that never need to forget how they did. And I think you can pretty much put the world in those three kinds of people. There are those people that have never realized their sin. Really, really realized their sin. A lot of people call themselves sinners, but they don't really realize their sin and how desperately sick it is to God. And then there are those that have. And they've come to that realization and they're so miserable they don't know what to do. And there's those that God has brought out that it's real easy to forget where they come from. So we start out there in Psalms 130 and he says, out of the depths I cry to you. I don't know if you've ever been in the depths or not. I have. It's an uncomfortable place to be. The depths is a place of... It's a place of darkness. It's a place of dampness. It's a place of sorrow. It's that place where you don't like the person you see in the mirror anymore. It's that place that you spend your every day wishing you could go back to yesterday and fix what you messed up, but you can't. You just repeated that again today. It's the kind of place that you find yourself and you'd give everything you got if you could just make a feeling go away. Everybody thinks that hell's going to be flames and fire and there'll be fire there. But what makes hell hell is you're eternally separated from God. It's a whole lot more than just fire. That's right. And the depths is exactly that. When you feel like God is a million miles away and you can't close the distance because you're a sinner and sin's unwelcome in the presence of God. And so he says, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. And I, and I think a lot of people don't understand how little they deserve to cry to God. Mm -hmm. I love that he said, Lord, just, just let my words fall on your ears. Just be attentive to my cry. A lot of people think that when they talk to God, it's just something everybody should be able to do, you know. But God's not the operator on the telephone. He's God. And I don't even deserve to let His shadow fall on me. You know what I mean? I don't even deserve to speak His name. But He's given me the privilege to call on Him anytime I want to. And He says, Lord, please don't stop listening to me. Hmm. Man, I don't think we realize how unworthy we are just to talk to Him. He goes on to say, If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, then who could stay? I love that song, I Can Only Imagine. It's a beautiful song, but I'll guarantee you there are nobody standing in His presence that stays on their feet. Everybody will be on their face before Him because it's impossible to stand in the presence of God and stay on your feet. He's God. And we'll all be on our face. If, if he kept a record of sin, who could stand? Man, I mean, who can stand in the presence of God like they're worthy of it? Nobody will have a claim. I mean, it's, it's not going to be a place, a court like you can argue your case because you'll already be convicted. You're a sinner in the presence of a perfect and wonderful God. He said, Lord, who could stand? Nobody could stand. Nobody would have a chance. If you were a God that gave us what we deserve, there'd be no hope. 
But he said, with you, O Lord, there is forgiveness, and therefore you're feared. And that word feared is not to be misrepresented. It doesn't mean trembling fear. It means that you are worshipped and reverent all. It means, God, the reason why I worship You, the reason why I bow my head before You, the reason why I humble myself before You, the reason why I have changed my life because of You is because only by Your name can I be forgiven. Only by Your name can my sins be erased. You are worthy of praise. You see what I mean? He, he, he's saying, Lord, I, I, I don't just fear you because you could destroy me. I fear you because you have changed my life. I respect you. I worship you. I'm in awe of you because you're everything to me. Please don't stop listening to me. He goes on to say this, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in His Word, I put my hope. You know, we listened to a great message about faith last night. Everybody's got to put their faith in something. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. Your faith's in something. Mm -hmm. If you're an atheist, your faith's in you. Mm -hmm. That you're right. Mm -hmm. You know? And if you're a Christian, you're trusting a God that you've never seen. We all get that. But if you're an evolutionist, you're trusting everybody come from a single cell of seaweed. So... <laughs> Everybody's trusting something. You know what I mean? You gotta trust something. And he said, Lord, in in your word I put my hope. Mm -hmm. And there are three things I want to talk about tonight that God wants to be. The first thing I want to talk about tonight that God wants to be is God wants to be your life source. He wants to be the place that you draw your life from. Everybody knows that God's the life source and the fact that He's breathed the breath of life into us. The Bible says that if God called back His breath, we'd all be dead. Because we're all living on borrowed breath. Mm -hmm. But it's so much more than that. He wants to be the reason why you do the things you do. You see what I mean? Not more than just the reason why you walk around. He wants to be more than just your physical life source. He wants to be your spiritual life source. See, He wants to be the reason you do what you do. He wants you to wear His brain. He wants to be your life source. And so many of us don't let God do that. You see, we want to find our source from things. Now, we want to find our source from emotion. We want Everybody wants to feel Everybody wants to feel the life. You know, we sit in a lawn chair with a glass of lemonade under the shade and say, this is the life. Well, no, it's not the life because in a few minutes you have to get up and walk out in the sun to go to the house and you'll be out of lemonade. <laughs> life yeah. is not an emotion. Mm -hmm. Life is a knowledge, a trust, and something that's trustable. I don't believe in God because there's nothing else to believe in. I believe in God because a legitimate source tells me He's right. That's right. And he, he says, I want to be your life source. And in you I put my hope and my soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman waits for the morning. And I love this statement because a watchman, he's got so much in charge. You see, if, 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 if the village is going to be attacked and he doesn't blow the horn and, and somebody's, somebody's boundary stone's moving or somebody dies, the blood's on his hands because that's his job to blow the horn. And you can imagine how stressed out he is in darkness. Because he's vulnerable. You can't see. And you, you're just flying on emotion. And you're just flying on a guess. And he says, Lord, I wait for you like the watchman waits for the. I wait to be in your presence because I'm going to have such a relief. Mm -hmm. I just can't wait, Lord, to be in your presence. I can't wait just that, that your all surrounds me. I can't wait, Lord, just to lay my eyes on you. I wait for that more than the watchman waits for the morning because it's then that I can take that. Sigh of relief because I'm where I'm going to be. He goes on to say, O Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with Him is full redemption. You see, I think that's the part that we don't understand. God, God wants to be a lot of things. We talked about He wants to be our life source, and God wants to be our lifestyle. Hmm. And you see, your lifestyle is more than just the things you do one day a week. Your lifestyle is, is the way you roll, is the way kids talk, you know. God wants to be what you do. But He wants to be your style. 
He wants to change your talk. He wants to change your walk. He wants to change your thinking. He wants to change your entertainment. He wants to change everything. He wants to be your lifestyle. And a lot of times our religion, our religion doesn't affect our life. Our life affects our religion. You see what I mean? A lot of times our religion doesn't change our opinion on sports or on our or doesn't change our activities. It does because we, we take church and we adjust it to fit everything else. But God says, that's not what I want. I want to be your lifestyle. I want you to serve me and then fit your schedule into me instead of taking your schedule and fitting me into your schedule. I want to be your lifestyle. I, I want you I want everything you do. I want it to be changed. Me. Why? Because I have fully redeemed you. Mm -hmm. Now, the Bible says that everybody's a servant to something. And I'm a servant to the Lord. Because He bought me at an incredibly high price. And I don't think we understand it. I don't think we, first of all, like I said, we don't understand how unworthy we are, but we don't understand how much God gave to have us. Mm -hmm. and, and, and God wants to be my lifestyle because He bought me at the price of His Son. And I sure don't think that's too much to ask. As God says, alright, I give my Son for you, but walk my way. He says, in Him is full redemption, and He Himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. He Himself. I heard my friend Greg Warren use this illustration, and I love this illustration. I want to use it because it's the best way I know to understand Jesus Christ's grace. Billy Graham was driving to a little town in the south, and he got himself a speeding ticket. And the officer didn't recognize the famous speaker, so he, he wrote him a ticket. He had to appear before the judge. Billy Graham appeared before the judge, and again the judge didn't understand. He didn't recognize the famous speaker, and he sent Billy Graham to a ten-dollar fine. After he'd made his judgment, he'd been made aware to him that he just sentenced Billy Graham to a ten-dollar fine for a speeding ticket in a one-horse town in the middle of nowhere. And the judge said, "Mr. Graham, I didn't realize who you was." And I done sent it. And I can't take it back. But I tell you what I can do, I can pay it for you. So the judge paid his ten dollar ticket and took him out and bought him a steak dinner. And that's exactly what Jesus did for me. He said, I've already passed your judgment. And I can't take it back. But I tell you what I'll do, I'll pay it for you. And I'll even do better than that. I'll give you part of my inheritance. Hmm. And see, I don't, I don't think I understand just how much it costs. See, not only does He want to be my life source and my lifestyle, but He wants to be my life state. And here lately, God has made it so plain to me that every place I walk, I leave some kind of mark. I spent all day with, I don't know, seven or eight people in one little classroom. And I couldn't help but wonder when I left, did I leave a mark that looked something like his hand? You see, everywhere you go, you're either going to make a statement for God or against Him. Because you can say whatever you want to say, but you've got to be on the building of the record. Religion. Religion has probably took more people away from God than it ever brought to it. Let me explain religion to you by reading James chapter 1. He says in verse 26, If anyone considers himself religious, does he not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and flawless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Tonight, I, I encourage everybody out there. I, I mentioned the three kind of people that are. There are. There's people out there tonight that are lost. And they don't even know it. Because they never really realized how sick their sin was to God. I think there's people that have rode church pews for 50 years that have never really come to the realization that God looks at me and he gets sick because of what I've done. 
You see, we can look at a man that's a murderer or a rapist. We can look at a drug dealer or an alcoholic. We can be sick of their sin. We look at the homosexuality of the world and it, it makes me sick. But you know what? God looks at the liar. He looks at the gossip. And he gets sick. Because it makes him it makes him feel rejected and it makes him feel like we took everything he said and ignored it. Because that's exactly what we've done. If you're out there tonight and you never really realized you're a sinner, and you do right now, I want you to fall to your knees and thank God. Because you can't dance on God's great dance floor until you fell into your knees and experienced His amazing grace. And if you realize you're a sinner, then you can be saved. But until you do, you can't. If you're out there tonight and you're in that deep, dark distress and you realize you're a sinner and you don't know how to get out, you're already halfway home. Nobody has to explain to you you're a sinner. And Jesus Christ has already paid the price. All you got to do is be willing to go His way. And if tonight you've already surrendered your life to the Lord, you truly have been saved. I just wish everybody out there would really realize the gift of salvation and what it is. Because religion is so much more. It's so much more than something you can put on and take off. It's the difference in what you used to be and what you are now. If you'd bow with me, I'd like to close this up in a word for you. Lord Jesus, I oftentimes get a whole lot on my heart. Can't get it directed the right way with word. Lord Jesus, if I speak it on my behalf, I'd sit down and shut up anyway. Because there ain't nothing I ever headed out myself that I didn't mess up. Lord, I ask you to take my simple words and my simple understanding. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you grab a hold of somebody tonight and change their life. Everybody's passionate about something, God. And I'm passionate about seeing people's lives change from them. Believing every lie the devil ever told them to start believing the truth. God, I spent a whole lot of my time in my life believing I was nothing and worthless and useless because that's what Satan told me. And I was in deep distress, but I called and you heard my name. Lord, I know there's a lot of people out there tonight that's maybe listening to this radio station because they got no place else to turn. And I just pray tonight, Lord, that they turn to You. Be with those, Lord Jesus, that don't know they're a sinner. They never really realize how sick their sin is and I ask You to show them. Help them see it because the difference is heaven and hell. And for each and every one of us, Lord, that have a relationship with You, I thank You, Lord, that You paid the ultimate price. Yes. And I ask You, Lord, Please now, never stop listening to me. Lord, I've told you so many times I'll do better than I did. I've told you so many times if you'll just help me out of this, I'll never do that again, and I did. Lord Jesus, I've tried my best to learn to listen. There's nothing I got you need. But Lord, I need you back. If you wake up in the morning without me, you're still God. If I wake up in the morning without you, I'm nothing. Lord, thank You for the gift of Your Son and for this radio station. And I just ask You to bless this night. In Jesus' name we pray.